Hi, everyone. So thanks for tuning in again for our alumni chat series. Today, I'm joined with an alum uh, from our South Africa Multiculturalism and Human Rights Program. Would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. So my name is Sam Lynn Summer. Um, I go to Brown University and I study ethnic studies at Brown um, and I'm a senior. Excellent. And when, what semester did you study abroad in South Africa with us? Yeah, so I was there in the spring of 2016, which was the spring of my junior year. Well, very good. Thank you for taking some time. I know senior year can be very busy, so I'll get right to it. Um, there are many options to study abroad in South Africa, including uh, a direct enroll. So mm -hmm. what made you choose South Africa as your location and the SIT multiculturalism program in particular? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I think two things made me really interested in South Africa. Um, one is, you know, I'm an ethnic studies concentrator. I think a lot about race and ethnicity and um, South Africa has a really complicated, oftentimes brutal um, racial history, and I was interested in seeing what that looked like. Um, I had heard a lot about how in South Africa, despite how recent apartheid was and how violent apartheid was, um, there are a lot of parallels between South Africa and the United States. Um, also, I'm multiracial, and I knew that in Cape Town, there is a very large population that is labeled by the, that was labeled by the apartheid state colored and still sometimes calls itself colored and actually like most, the largest population in that part of South Africa has this um, complicated multiracial history that I was really interested in learning about. Um, yeah, and then also I knew that out of that population, out of the city, Cape Town, out of the country, South Africa, um, there's a lot of really exciting art that was being made. And I started, I did some like research papers back in like freshman year on hip hop from Cape Town um, and the way that people use art to navigate their identities. So art has always been a way for me to navigate my racial identity and just think about race and ethnicity. So I was really interested to see how that worked in a South African context. Excellent. So um, yeah, that's definitely a big part of life in South Africa. Were you were you there during the Kapsa Klopsa or the um, Cape, uh, what, what is it in English? Um, Cape the Mitchell. Cape Carnival? Yeah, the Cape Carnival. Um, no, I missed it, unfortunately. I think it happened, I think it happens around New Year's. So it happened like right before, it's like a little after New Year's and it happened right before um, we got there. But yeah, one of my classmates did her independent study project on that tradition in Cape Town. So. Um, was, I learned a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, it was quite an interesting experience. I saw it one year when I was in Cape Town, but mm. I couldn't remember exactly when it was. Mm. Um, so you've mentioned quite a few different aspects of the um, experience in Cape Town and with mm -hmm. SIT that appealed to you. But if you had to name one aspect that was most appealing or your favorite about the SIT program, mm -hmm. what would that be? Yeah. Um, so now that I've had some distance from from the program and been able to reflect on it, I would say the thing that I think is most unique and special about it and like really defines the experience um, is the three homestays or four homestays that you do um, because there's really a lot of intentionality and focus put on like establishing relationships with people in whatever place you're living in um, and trying to get at least a rudimentary understanding of what their lives are like. And I know I still keep in touch with a lot of the people who I met in Cape Town. Um, and I think like in many ways, I know Cape Town way better than I know Providence where I go to college now. And a lot of that is because I've developed like real relationships with um, people in a lot of different parts of the city. So, yeah. And it's a wonderful city. It's so multifaceted to get to mm -hmm. know there. So um, you mentioned your classmate did some research on the Cape Carnival. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to delve into what your independent research was like mm -hmm. and what you covered and if you're continuing those studies now that you're back at Brown? Yeah, so um, my research, yeah, the uh, I would say like if I was to name another thing that was the defining piece of my experience, it would be the research that I did. Um, so my independent study project was a it kind of it 
So, okay. It was a poetry workshop that um, looked at what poetry workshops could lend to understandings of race and ethnicity in a segregated city or just in a city in general. Um, so to be more specific, after doing these home stays where in South Africa you're intentionally placed with um, families of different ethnicities and in different parts of the city, um, it's really hard not to not to confront how different people's lives are um, depending on what type of racial, ethnic, linguistic backgrounds they have. Um, and that all plays out in space. It all plays out spatially because the city has been very, was very intentionally um, spatially engineered to keep people separate. And a lot of that remains today, unfortunately. So um, there are some poetry organizations in Cape Town um, that intentionally try to create spaces that uh, break those boundaries, like spaces that are multilingual, where you hear people doing poetry in Afrikaans, Osa, and English. Um, and I got really interested in like, well, what can poetry do to help us understand this city? Um, I write poetry at home or like all the time. So it was really important to me. So I basically spent, um, I spent my independent study time um, creating this workshop where I worked with a lot of local poets and we, um, we, we, uh, I, I, I created it with another poet um, a workshop where we went to different public spaces in Cape Town and explored the ways that we experienced them depending on what our identities were, whether that's nationality, race, gender, language, stuff like that. Um, and then after, people submitted their poems to me um, and I kind of weaved them into this analytical narrative that made it all into like one story, not exactly a linear story, but a, I guess a story of sorts. Um, and yeah, it was a really exciting form of research and art, and I think a type of activism too. And yeah, so now I'm writing a thesis in um, at Brown, and it's on a very similar, it's like going along the same lines. I'm looking at um, how race plays out in the geography of Providence, and um, trying to explore it through my own creative writing, and I might include a workshop component as well. Um, and that was absolutely inspired by what I did in South Africa. I would not be doing this if it wasn't for that. Um, so yeah, that's awesome to hear. And uh, speaking from experience, I definitely know that Cape Town is a very different city if you navigate through it in English or if you navigate through it in Afrikaans. Mm -hmm. um, so it's fascinating to hear that you were able to do that as well. Do you speak Afrikaans? I, I did learn quite a bit of Afrikaans oh. when I was living over there, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up bilingual German and English, and mm -hmm. Afrikaans is just like, uh, the saying is Afrikaans klingt wie Kinderdeutsch. Afrikaans mm -hmm. sounds like child, uh, <laughs> children's <Yeah>. German, <laughs> funny. which is true. <laughs> And it's very, uh, like, I always was able to read it because it's so, once you know how to pronounce it, it's so simple mm. um, if you have a Germanic language background. Mm. So, but um, I, the, the accent, though, in Cape Town is just enough different from <laughs> what I learned where I'm like, what? What do yeah. you say? What do yeah. you say? Okay. Yeah. But, um, so now to change topics a little bit, if... Mm -hmm. There was one thing that you wish you knew about South Africa before you applied. What would that be? Hmm. That's a good question and a hard one to answer because I don't think anything that I, well, definitely nothing that I would have learned would have changed me, would have stopped me from applying because I'm pretty happy I went. But um, hmm. You can, you can also say um, I, nothing if you'd like. It doesn't exactly have to answer the question. Hmm. Well, okay. I, I would just say like, yeah, I think one, one thing that I didn't expect um, was like, I guess how similar to the United States a lot of it would would feel um, a lot of the histories and the ways that like, um, yeah, the things that we, like when we go to monuments, for example, like we went to 
um, the Vortrecker monument in Johannesburg, which is like um, this monument that we looked at as like this ridiculous, like almost neo-Nazi monument to Afrikaners, like taking the land of black people. Um, it actually looked just like the way that we draw like pioneers in the US or like the way we memorialize the Oregon Trail. Um, and I think a lot of my experience in South Africa made me think about, like it made it very easy to be critical of this other country um, that had its own ugly history. But the more I learned, the more I realized that like it was quite similar to the United States and it sort of woke me up to like how I should be critical of my own country. That is totally understandable, and that monument is both ridiculous and absolutely fascinating at the same time. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, you know, on the on the cenotaph there, the Ontsferiau South Africa that you saw, mm -hmm. um, I was actually there on December 16th one year, and the sun actually does hit right there wow. in the center. And that's but when, like, people from all over come and congregate there, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, Sounds a little scary. Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a different experience, and that yeah. really yeah, had, had me look at the U.S. very differently. Hmm. But now, as we're coming to the end, there are people out there that will be watching this, just mm -hmm. for contemplating study abroad in Africa or South Africa or just mm -hmm. in general. So. If you could reach through and say to them, hey, this is a, a little bit of advice or a final push to press the submit button, what mm. would you say to them? Mm. Um, yeah, I, wow. Um, I think there's, I'm so glad that I studied abroad, that I studied abroad in Cape Town. Um, and I think what was really, what it really taught me about is like different ways of learning um and i think like at least for me i've spent so much time um in classrooms and going through a very like kind of the same academic cycle from age five to age 20. um and it becomes easy to to just let myself think that like reading books in classrooms is the best way to learn um and yeah, I think like doing a program, doing a study abroad program and specifically one with SIT um, forces you to confront like what learning actually is. And like, I, I know when I was there, I definitely realized that like, I, I was learning the most from the things that I was doing outside of the classroom and from like being very intentional and conscious and like working hard at the way I interact with the world, like outside of the classroom, then in a way it was kind of meaningless for me to study really hard and then just like f drop it when I, when I walked out of the, our academic building. Um, so yeah, I would just say like one of the big benefits of studying abroad, especially with SIT, um, is that you learn how to learn outside of school, and I, or at least I did. And I think that'll be, val I hope that'll be valuable for a while. I guess we'll see, but yeah. Well, thank you very much uh, mm -hmm. for taking time again today. And I wish you the best of luck and make sure that you do keep in touch with us because we like to hear what our alumni are doing. And I hope to see you back in South Africa one day too. Yeah, hope so. All hope right, so. Have, a, cool. have a good afternoon. Thank you, you too.